All right, hello, this is Mr. Coates, and this is Lecture 7B. I had to break up that other lecture into two parts because it's getting a little long. So we're going to start on the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is one of the most complex cycles that students have a hard time with, and you really need to know it inside and out. There's always a question on the exam uh, about the nitrogen cycle, and I will ask you quite a lot of questions about the nitrogen cycle myself. You need to know the processes and you need to know the products. So we're going to start once again in the atmosphere. Um, atmosphere, nitrogen, remember the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. Two-thirds of the atmosphere is nitrogen, N2, which is a gas. And you breathe it all the time. It's fairly inert. That means it doesn't react with anything. And you breathe it, it doesn't affect you. It kind of stays as nitrogen gas. It doesn't change. I like to say that nitrogen gas is what I call broken because it doesn't react with anything. Now in order for us to use it, for organisms to use it, for it to go through this cycle, it has to be fixed. And that's why I say it's broken up here because in order for us to use it we have to fix it. And this is the process of nitrogen fixation. When we take atmospheric nitrogen and we turn it into useful nitrogen here in the soil. That happens one of two ways. First it can happen through lightning. Whenever lightning occurs here then uh, the heat of the lightning reacts with the gases in the atmosphere and produces ammonium or ammonia which then falls to the earth. That ammonia or ammonium is in the soil at that point. The other way it can happen is through plant roots. Plant roots, certain plants, specifically legumes, have the ability to harbor a certain type of bacteria in their roots, nitrifying bacteria. That's what this symbol is here, is bacteria. And those bacteria have a very good ability to take that nitrogen gas and turn it into this ammonium so the plants can use it. Now, once we get the ammonium or ammonia in the soil, we have to also change that. Ammonia is highly toxic to most life. Like I said, these bacteria can handle it, but most life can't. And so we have to change that into something that's less toxic or more usable. And so through the process of nitrification, which also happens with a different bacteria here, then we transfer that NH4 or uh, plus or NH3, which is ammonia, into a uh, new type of form of nitrogen called nitrites, which is NO2, or nitrates, NO3. Nitrites and nitrates are easily absorbed by plants, and we call that process assimilation. And so plants and animals will then incorporate that nitrogen into proteins, which build their structures and make them look the way they look. So that nitrogen then gets incorporated into them. Now, of course, as plants and animals go through their daily lives, they die or they eliminate wastes. And so that waste then is acted upon by bacteria again through a process called ammonification, which produces ammonia. And then that ammonia can go back through that cycle. Now, there's one other way that the soil nitrites and nitrates have to get back up in the atmosphere. So there's this other part here where we have another type of bacteria here. And these bacteria live in an area with no oxygen. So this has to happen in an area of no oxygen. And this process is called denitrification. It typically happens in moist soil like swamps and things like that. And that means that this nitrogen that's locked up in the soil then gets turned back into nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere. And that's denitrification. These steps are all important. These compounds are all important as well. You need to know those and the order and how they get transformed. I can't stress this cycle enough. The way we affect this cycle, burning fossil fuels. Once again, in fossil fuels, there's a small amount of nitrogen locked up in those fossil fuels. And when we burn those fossil fuels, the nitrogen reacts with the atmosphere and creates nitrogen oxides, which then can become air pollutants. Uh, also, nitrogen-based synthetic fertilizers also cause problems, especially with getting into groundwater and creating nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere as well. Whenever you buy a bag of fertilizer, this first number, there's three numbers on it, this first number right here is the amount of nitrogen in that bag. Nitrogen is basically plant food. Well, so we just finished up with the nitrogen cycle, so now we're going to look at the phosphorus cycle. Now this is a minor cycle. You don't need to know as much about it as the other cycles, uh, so I'll go over it fairly quickly. Most phosphates start out here in rocks. Uh, a lot of rocks contain phosphate. A lot of limestone contains phosphate. And this phosphate then gets weathered and then can be uptaken by plants. Phosphate is another big plant nutrient. As that phosphorus is weathered, it gets in the soil and then the plants uptake that phosphorus. And then once again through consumption, that phosphorus can then move into animals. Now, important molecules that um, are in 
uh, organisms that you need to know that contain phosphorus, DNA. DNA has a lot of phosphorus in it. The other one is ATP. If you remember back from biology, ATP is that all-important energy molecule. This P right here stands for phosphorus. So then the phosphorus uh, organisms uh, that contain phosphorus will then die and decompose. Once again, the phosphorus is released to the soil. Then it becomes, it can become phosphate rock again, or it can become and be taken up by plants and animals again. Now there is some phosphate that gets uh, dissolved in the oceans and becomes ocean sediments that can then be uh, turned into rock later on as well. However, one of the things you have to know about this cycle, there's something missing, and I don't know if you caught it, but there is no phosphorus in the atmosphere. Phosphorus does not have a gaseous component. There is no phosphorus type of gas in the atmosphere, and so the atmosphere is not in this cycle at all. And that's one of the biggest things about this cycle is that phosphorus does not have an atmospheric component. The last cycle I want to talk about a little bit is sulfur cycle. The oxygen cycle is also a minor cycle. Um, one of the things about sulfur cycle is that a lot of fossil fuels contain sulfur. Sulfur is incorporated into plants and animals as well and some of the proteins and other molecules. And that sulfur gets concentrated in those fossil fuels. So when we burn fossil fuels, especially coal, we release a lot of sulfur into the atmosphere and that can cause some air pollution. And oxygen is uh, another element. It's almost, this cycle is almost identical to the carbon cycle. If you look at uh, the element oxygen and carbon and put some of those reactions together, they kind of follow each other around. One of the things to realize is that oxygen is not most abundant in our atmosphere. It's actually in the lithosphere in silicon dioxide rocks. And so most of the oxygen on the planet is in a solid form, not in a gaseous form. I hope that uh, helped you learn something about these cycles and uh, that the uh, lecture wasn't too long. Um, I'm sorry I had to break it up into two parts. If you have any questions, please bring them to class. Like I said, these cycles are very, very important. You need to know them inside and out.